Hi, Rohan. How are you doing? I'm good, sir. How are you? Very good. Very good. So, in mathematics, what is going on? In math, we have started learning about the domain and range, along with uh, learning a new equation, the vertex form of y equals a in brackets x minus h squared and k. Okay. What else? Uh, along with that, we have also learned about how to find the axis of symmetry, mm -hmm. identify if the parabola uh, or the graph of the equation is opening up and down, okay. and if there is a shift and change in the coordinates of where the placement is for maximum and minimum value. Very good. What else? I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, it's a vast subject. So we'll pick on all the topics which you have talked about regarding the vertex form of quadratic equation, okay? So let me share whiteboard and then we'll work on that. So Rohan, what you were saying is that you today have learned the vertex form, which is y equals to a, x minus use letter h square plus k, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's begin from here. What is the vertex? If that is your vertex form of the equation, can you tell me from here? Vertex would be h and k. What is the axis of symmetry? x equals h. h. Got it. And what is the domain of the function? X, E, R in brackets. So for any quadratic function, the domain has no restrictions. It is all real numbers. So we write in the set form in these curly brackets. So these curly brackets means set of all the numbers belonging to real numbers, right? Set of all real numbers, correct? So, sir, those are only used in curly brackets, not like the normal round or square brackets, no. right, sir? Curly brackets means set all. So, this means so set is very defined collection of objects. Let me write that. In this case, we are saying it is set of real numbers, right? So R here gives you set of real numbers. Many times we write like this. Is that okay? Set of real numbers. Okay, like sir. Set of natural numbers, like counting numbers, one, two, three, four, right? So let's talk mm -hmm. about set of numbers for, for a moment, right? So we, we may write N like this, but I just write so these are the numbers like one, two, three, four, right? Then we have set of whole numbers, right? Which includes zero. Set of oh, integers. Okay, integers will include negative numbers also, right? And positive numbers also, including zero. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Then we have rational numbers. So rational numbers are of the form of P by Q, where Q does not is not equal to zero. Okay, sir. And P and Q belongs to integers. You see that? So like fractions which you talk about. Is okay? Okay, sir. Then we have set of real numbers. Now, there are many numbers which are irrational. So we'll get to real numbers. Before that, let's look into irrational numbers. Can you give me an example of some numbers which are irrational? Like for, example, a... for example, pi. So for example, square root two. Now, irrational numbers, the part here is, see, when you have a fraction kind of a thing, right? 
If you can write a number in that form, then it is a rational number. But if you have square root 2, use the calculator. It is non-terminating decimal number. Right? Sir, so would like 4 square root 5 also be a thing? Yeah. Like a... Square root of 4 will be 2, which is a real number, uh, which can be written as 2 over 1, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Type out, use your calculator. What is the value of square root of 2 equals to? Without rounding it up, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, just write that. It will be 1.4142135621. You see, there is no pattern. So 1.4142, there's no pattern, correct? So this number, yes, it is non-terminating decimal number, right? Now, if you type out 1 over 3, so what do you get? 1 over 3. Okay. It's going to be continuous. It is repeating. So the repeating decimals, which are non-terminating, are rational numbers because they can be written as 1 over 3, as I've shown you, correct? Yes, sir. However, square root 2, which is non-terminating and non-repeating, it cannot be written in the form of P over Q. Therefore, it's an irrational number. Similarly, pi, E, and so many other numbers, correct? Okay, so these are all irrational numbers. So we know irrational numbers are given by Q bar or complement of Q, not rational. You get the idea? Yes, sir. So irrational and rational numbers, if we include both, then it's called irrational, real numbers. You get, get the idea? Oh, okay, sir. So let's, uh, let me on a fresh page uh, show you this, right? So we're talking about one set of numbers, which we say are natural numbers, correct? And then we have another set, which includes a zero, and we say this is a whole number. Is it okay? Yes, sir. And then we have over this, another set of numbers, which we call integers, where we are using plus minus numbers, right? So we are using whole numbers with positive and negative sign. Is that okay? Yeah. Then on that, we have another set where we are using the numbers, which are called the rational numbers of the form, where we have one integer over another integer. You see that? Yes, sir. Then we have some numbers which are not represented in the form of rational numbers. And therefore, we have another set of numbers, which we call as, let me just change the color. So this is real numbers. So real numbers include irrational numbers like square root 2, pi, e, there are many other numbers. Is it? Many other square roots, radicals. Is that okay? Yes, sir. These are real numbers. Strictly speaking, real numbers are the numbers which can be represented on a number line. All the numbers which we are looking into. Right? There are more sets of numbers here, right? So this is not the end of it, right? It just keeps on the complex numbers. Uh, the complex numbers, let me write C. Well, for example, you know square root of B square minus 4AC, you have used that quadratic formula? Yes, sir. So if that is negative, then you cannot find the square root, correct? Okay, sir. Square root of minus 1 is I, and I is a complex number. Square root of minus 1, you say, is not real, correct? Yes, sir. So that means we are going way beyond the real numbers, correct? So there are many sets of numbers, but the real numbers, which we re really are restricting ourselves to at your grade, is all the numbers which can be represented on a number line. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Now, I say square root 2. Square root 2 can be represented on a number line. Can you tell me how? Because of its decimals. If no, already... because you cannot write this as a decimal. 1.41... Four, five, something, something. No. So what you do is, if you draw one unit length and one unit rent, then what is the hypotenuse? One square plus one square square root. Correct. Yes, sir. Which is two. Square root of two. So now you know this length is square root of two. Correct. On yes, a number sir. line, I can make an arc, and I know this is square root of two. Do you see how 
I have sketched a dimension which is exactly equal to square root of two on the number line. You see that idea? Yes, sir. That is how you represent. And therefore, we say that the number line represents all real numbers. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Perfect. So let's get back to our domain and range. Okay, so let me clear the screen now. So when you're talking about the parabola, so basically when we talk about parabola, it is a smooth curve, which could be opening upwards or it could be opening downwards, correct? Yes, sir. Now, either case, you see along the x-axis, it has no restriction. And therefore we say domain is all real numbers. That means any number which can be represented on this number line, correct? Yes, sir. That becomes a domain. And we write this as X belongs to real numbers, which 99% of students always say X E R X E R. This E means belongs to. Okay, sir. Greek symbols. Okay. Oh, it, it has to be written as a Greek symbol, sir. So yeah. you can't just write a normal. It is not e. e. It is not what E you're saying. It's like alpha, beta, gamma, theta. E, e is the Greek symbol. Oh, okay. Because when I thought like it's just like English writing. Like no, no, no. They write like this. They write like this. Okay. So as you see, that E is belongs to. Is it okay? Okay. Fine. So the domain of your quadratic function is all real numbers. Now let's talk about range. Range is the y value. So if it is a local, see, this is an absolute minimum, right? Yes, sir. So if this value is, let us say, let us say minus five. In that case, what is the range of this function? It's opening up. So it's yeah. the range is y belongs to real numbers. And that is a condition that y is greater than or equal to minus five. You understand? So say the slash is not a division, right? So no. the slash is a condition such that. Condition. So it gives you the condition. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So basically, in this one, you're just telling us that our y can e equal or greater to neg by negative 5, right, sir? Yes. But if it were to be close in it, then this means that y would be less than or equal to whatever our k is, right, sir? Correct. Correct. And if we do not know, we just write y e r it is such that y is greater or equal to... Wait, but how do you write... If you don't know your k value, yeah, then you, what would it be? You have to know. You have to know. Greater than oh, you zero, have to know. Greater than zero, greater than whatever number it is, right? So basically, as you are saying rightly, when you have equation y goes to a, x minus h whole square plus k, then this is y is greater than or equal to k, correct? Okay. So that so it would never be less than. It would never if, be less than. No, if a is greater than zero. It all depends on A, right? If it is oh, reflected, okay. then it will be less than, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. You have understood this. So that is how we give domain and range for the quality function, correct? Yes, sir. Very good. One more important thing before we get into sketching graph from the vertex form, and that is, see, when you have y equals to x squared, then let's quickly go through some points. The key points could be what? We could take the value as, let's say, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. Squaring these numbers, we get 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9, oh. 16, correct? Now, we know the second difference is constant, but let's look into the first difference. What is 1 minus 4 equals to? Negative 3. 0 minus 1? Negative 1. 1, 3, 5, and then 7. And from here, you also notice one thing that this number here is the vertex, correct? Yes, sir. Now, 
And we know that parabola is symmetric. Correct? Y goes to yes. x. So y equals to x squared is a parabola which is kind of like this. And as you know, this is like, correct? And what yes. we're trying to say here is that if I know the vertex, which is 0, 0 in this case, then to get to the next point, what do I do? I move one unit right and one up. See the first difference is one? Yes, sir. And then from two, I go to, from one, I mean, from zero, I went to one, one step. From one year to go to two, that means one to two is one more step. And how much up do you move? You move three. three up. So, so this is how the step pattern was made, right? So based on our Correct. basic parabola. Correct. So you see these steps are one, three, five, and so on. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And another thing, because it's symmetry, we know the step on the other side also, because it is symmetric, right? Yes, sir. That sir, is when symmetry. graphing your um uh, quadratic um when graphing when graphing your parabola, right, sir? You how many points do you need? Five at least. Five are good. Five are good. five key points. Okay, sir. Amongst five key points, one of the most important thing is, see, when it opens up, right? That means when A is greater than zero, you see what? You see that when X approaches, if X is very large, negative, or when X is very large, positive infinity, right? Going in this direction or in that direction. In that case, Y is going where? Positive, up. Do you see that? Okay, sir. So this is also a parameter or a point you could mention apart from the points which you are showing on the graph. Is it okay? So apart okay, from sir. these points, that is also a very important thing. We call this as end behavior. End behavior. So sir, end behavior is just x moving infinite amount to left or right and y moving Approaching. infinite amount up or down. Yeah. So we see we cannot be there at infinity, but we are saying when we are approaching a very large number, that is what we mean when I draw this arrow, right? So when x approaches a large negative number, which is like negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. This is what we are saying. When x approaches large negative number, y approaches positive infinity. So both sides, we are going up approaching positive infinity when A is positive. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Now, and yes. Uh, and my other question is that, you know how we, when we do our finite differences, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. For when we have to do in the chart, if, are we, do we have to do both? Like, what do you call the A multiplied by two, sir? Like for an example, since our finite differences are just going to be two, we just multiply our A, but we just double our A. We have to also yeah. show it in this way as well. Double, you mean if we are working on an equation, which is Y equals to, let's say, 2X square, right? Then yes, all sir. these numbers will be multiplied by 2, right? So our finite difference would just be 4 for each one of them. Yeah, yeah. then the step will be doubled. You get the idea. So let me okay, just get sir. you a fresh page to explain you this, right? So if I have Y equals to A, x square plus bx plus c, a general equation, right? Yes, sir. Uh, let me write down uh, this equation more in the form of vertex because we are focusing there, right? x minus h whole square plus k, right? In that case, we know that the word, let us say a is positive for us, right? So, so we know that this is the vertex and this vertex is at h k, correct? Now, since a is positive, we are going up, correct? That means as x approaches infinitely large value, y approaches infinitely large value. When x approaches even negative infinitely large value, y approaches positive infinitely large value. So that yeah, is okay. to say the graph will be kind of like this. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. So basically, 
y is only dependent on x's values yes sir x is independent variable and therefore we'll always sketch x on the x axis i'm not drawing the x axis but i'm just showing this is my axis of symmetry which is x equals to h is it okay yes sir so axis of symmetry is found from your mid mm, maximum or minimum point right sir from in the vertex form x minus h h gives you the axis of symmetry yeah so it's basically the vertical line right sir if you yeah. were to graph it like a linear state. equation vertical line so one is constant and the other is always changing correct now if a is not one in that case step will be 1 3 5 7 multiplied by a you see that if a is okay, two sir. the step doubles if a is half step is half okay so it's basically our parab our basic parabola is some uh, coordinates of y which are then multiplied or depending on our a's value correct so here if i go one unit up normally step will be one unit if i go another unit up my step will be 1 2 and 3 another unit up we go 1 2 3 4 5 you see that yes sir 1 3 and 5 how if a is not one then this gets multiplied by 5a 3a a do you see that yes sir if a is negative it will open downwards so it works and if a fraction sir then the whole like our right. whole step pattern would just be in fractions ah. right sir yes yes it, it will become wider like this is it okay yes sir if a is less than 1 but greater than 0 is it okay okay so that is how it is now knowing this helps us to sketch parabolas very easily let's move on to the next page and sketch some parabolas let me give you one equation y equals to 2 x minus let's say 3 whole square plus 5 i'm just randomly written this equation is it okay yeah okay sir now so tell me where is the vertex it would be 3 and 5 sir so 3 and 5 let's say 1 2, so there would be no x intercept one, two, three, four, and it is opening upwards correct yeah it's opening upwards Do you see no x intercepts because it opens up right? Yes. Now, sir. how do you get these points? What you could do is their steps are two times, right? Yeah. So be two, four, One, three, five, eight, eight, yeah, 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 two, six. So ten. from here, if I go one step right, then I have to go two up. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Another step right, I have to go six up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see that? Yes, sir. And without calculation, I can get all my points. And since we know that our axis symmetry is going through the vertex, right? Which is x equals to three in this case, correct? Yes, sir. We can find the other points very easily. Is that correct? Okay, sir. So that basically, to calculate all your points, you have three different methods, right, sir? Mm -hmm. One of them is like the normal chart, like x and y put down. Yeah, yeah. You can calculate. The right. other could be the step pattern to yeah, get yeah. it, and then the last one is the equation of doubling your a value to get your finite differences. Well, the step pattern includes multiplication by a, right? So, so basically, the step pattern multiplied by a gives you the real steps required from the vertex, right? So, when you have the vertex form, so it basically depends what equation you have. If you are given the vertex form, then the best way of graphing is to find the vertex, find the steps, multiply by a, and then get all the points as shown here. Okay. If a is positive, then you are adding, going up. If a is negative, in that case you multiply n with a negative number. So your steps will be negative, right? Negative one, negative three, negative five. So you are coming downwards. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. So that is how you sketch. Is it okay? Yes, Now sir. you observed in this particular case that there are no x-intercepts. Now can you tell me? I'll give you a couple of equations and tell me find the number of x-intercepts. 
of X intercepts. So, okay, sir. Without calculations. So let me give you equations A. Y equals to half X minus two whole square plus three. How many? Tell me. You would have a zero, sir. None. Why? Because if you look at it, right, sir, if you were to do your X and K coordinates, you would get two and three, which means it's not lying on the X axis. But another way could also be looking at A and K, which are both the same signs. Yeah. So two and three going up means you're going away from the axis. And another thing which you notice is the A and K are same sign, correct? Yes, sir. And for B, since both of them are different, you would get two of them. Two X intercepts. Because you have now the vertex, which is at minus two and minus five, correct? And you're opening upwards. So minus two minus five means you are in which quadrant? You're in quadrant three, right? So in quadrant three, if you move up, you will actually get two X intercepts, correct? Yes, sir. When will you get only one X intercept? When you uh, when your k is zero, very and good. your x is something, so it could be like even a x squared or a x minus k and uh, minus h in brackets. Perfect. So you can also get the number of x intercepts directly from the equation itself. You don't really have to calculate. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. So with that we come to an end of this particular topic and let me just give you a test question here. So my equation here is y equals to half x minus one whole square plus three. Let me write minus half, right? Can you tell me for this question characteristics of the parabola? Parabola is the name of the graph which you see when yes, you sir. get a quadratic equation. So characteristics, can you tell me? When you say characteristics of parabola, what should you give? You should write domain. You should write range. You can write end behavior, which you learned today. You can write x-intercepts, y-intercept, you can here say, because you're given the vertex form, you can also say what is the vertex, correct? Axis of symmetry, let me write AOS, axis of symmetry, correct? Opening up or down. But would I also have to describe like if it's vertically um, uh, stretched or compressed by what factors here? Correct. Would that, that also be like another characteristic? And that I will put under transformations. Is that clear to you, right? So basically, yes, yeah, A, describe A, right? Vertically stretched, compressed, these things. So can you just describe me quickly? So in the equation, Y equals to negative one over two X minus one squared plus three, we can see that for our domain, it would be in curve brackets, X, E, R, meaning all real numbers. Yes. For a range, it would be Y, E, R, Y belongs is, to real numbers. Say Y belongs to real numbers. While Y belongs to real numbers, that is Y is less than or equal to three because yeah. the graph is opening downwards. Yeah. So in this, for our X intercept, we would have two because both our A and K values are opposite. So the meaning that there'd be two X intercepts. Yeah. Our Y intercept would be always uh, one yeah yeah but now oh, i thought i had to will, give the coordinates you can co coordinate because you could put x equals to zero right so for y yes, you sir. put x equals to zero calculate so you get y equals to minus half one square plus three is it okay yes so 2.5 correct three minus okay sir. x intercept you know how to calculate 
when y is zero. So, yeah, so write y equals to zero equals to minus half x minus one whole square plus three, correct? So you bring yes, this sir. to the right hand side, you get half x minus one whole square equals to three, multiply by two, you get x minus one whole square equals to three times two, correct? Which is six, correct? Six, yes, sir. Now, now you square root to get x minus x. one plus minus square root of six. And then x is equals to one plus minus square root of six. You see that? So yes, we get sir. two x intercepts and they are at x equals to one plus minus square root of six. So you okay. can easily calculate the two values also, which we'll focus on in the next class. Is that okay? Okay, sir. What x you can easily read, which is- Which is one, one and three. One and three. And x is- It's just one. one. So it opens up you know. Da. No, wouldn't it open down, sir, because oh, sorry, your sorry. A is negative. You are right, down. Perfect, because A is negative, correct? So when you are given in the vertex form, you see the easiest thing to read is this portion, correct? Find yes, the vertex sir. axis and opens, and then get into the other, other things. So you, that is how you could actually rearrange and then provide complete characteristics of any uh, parabola. Parabola is the graph name of the graph, which you see when you plot a quadratic function, correct? Yes, sir. So we'll end our class here. Uh, Rohan, can you summarize all the learnings for the day? So today I learned about the vertex form y equals to a in brackets x minus x whole square plus k. Yeah. Understanding how to find out how many x intercepts there are in an equation and being able to under look at the equation easily and determine it without doing any sort of solving. Um, uh, learning about the step pattern and knowing how to implement it to find my coordinates other than using a chart of x and y. Another thing is knowing the do domain and range okay. and how to describe a, um, a parabola when graphed, if it's vertically stretched or compressed by how many it's factored. Very, very, very. You also learn that looking at the uh, vertex form, you can see how many X intercepts are ex expected because comparing the sign of A and K if they have the same sign, that means we have no x-intercept. If they are opposite sign, we have two x-intercepts. And if k is zero, then we have only one x-intercept, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll conclude our class here today. Thank you, Rohan, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.